Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day and welcome to the channel. So sitting right next to me is my very heavily modified 2019 EasyGo TXT. Pretty much everything on this was rebuilt from the ground up and is currently being powered by um, a 72 volt power system for the main battery pack. And then I have a 12 volt battery pack sitting right here underneath this, uh, powering pretty much all the electronics. So the LED lights, headlights, taillights, uh, sound system, things like that. Um, this battery that I'm running though is about 230 amp hours of capacity, which is super overkill for running just your standard LED lights and even a sound system. And so pretty much from, from the time I started building this car, I always wanted to turn this into more of a mobile power station. And I ended up finding a, an inverter that I think will work really well for this. So this is a 3000 watt continuous um, inverter that I plan to install in the cart so that I can run various things, power tools, things like that, and get a little bit more versatility out of this cart. So let's open up this box, see what's in here, what it comes with, and then I'll show you where I'm gonna install it. All right, so right here is the Lidtime 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter um, and everything that it comes with. So the inverter itself, uh, you have two negative wires, two positive wires, plus a little ground clamp, and then the on off switch for everything. It was all packaged nicely, uh, no damage to anything. On this end you have cooling fans along with your positive and negative uh, connectors here and then on the other side you've got four of your standard three prong three prong prong uh, outlets and then you also have a hard wire location right here for uh, things that I believe are up to a 30 amp draw uh, I think all the other ones are uh, 15 amp and then you have a couple of different spots for USB and then for the remote right here and then your on off switch as far as the installation location um, my 12 volt battery goes right here. I've removed it though, uh, just to get a little bit more access to everything. I'm probably gonna have to remove this battery as well. And it's gonna sit right on top of these two rear batteries. Um, there's just barely enough clearance to get it in here, but uh, I have tested it and it does fit really well. I've also made I've also made this mount right here, which will straddle the top of the batteries. And then I can actually mount the inverter to the top of this, have these bolted to the side of the battery so that nothing's moving around and that everything holds in place. All right, so here I got the batteries removed. And like I had said, I made this plate right here. It fits pretty snug across the top of the two batteries. I can mount them uh, in these holes that were for the uh, straps that go on the sides. And then, the inverter will mount like this on top, kind of something like that. So I can use for sure three of the holes, two there, one for sure back there. I might be able to use this front one, but I'm not 100% sure yet. And I will put a little bit of foam in between here so that it holds it up a little bit off the batteries, which will allow me to put um, a couple of uh, bolts through there.
there it is with the uh, top plate mounted. Got these holes drilled. I was still able to use these handles. Not that I'm gonna actually be able to lift by those handles because it will come apart in the middle. Um, but definitely on there, it's not gonna go anywhere. And uh, the weight of the inverter will kind of hold everything pretty firm to push this down a little bit. Uh, I'm not real worried about this bowing over time. Uh, if it does a little bit, it really doesn't matter. All right, so there's the inverter all bolted down. Uh, it's not connected to the batteries yet because I got to put the batteries in first and then slide this over the top because uh, it's a pretty tight fit. But uh, should uh, should go together pretty good. All right, so here I got everything pretty much uh, mounted in, bolted to the batteries, and the um, inverter is bolted to the top of this mounting bracket. I did have to make a little bit of an adjustment. I had to move this battery and turn it back the other way around so the wires are now coming out of the back of it and I just had to notch the mount back there um, because coming out from up here it was getting in the inverter was getting in the way of the wires coming out um, so not really that big of a deal thankfully I was able to move it and flip the battery around but that's pretty much what it looks like I'm gonna get it the uh, positive and negative wires wired in and put these other batteries back together and then we can uh, test it out all right so I got it all wired in and everything put back together um, I will clean up some of this wiring still a little bit. I'll tie some of this stuff out of the way. But uh, they're both four gauge cables, two for the positive, two for the negative, wired into my uh, distribution blocks right here, which go into this battery cutoff for the 12 volt. And then over on the other side, so over here, uh, the ground wire is uh, clamped on. And then this is the remote turn on or on off switch. You don't actually need to have this. You, know, you could just open up the seat and turn it on manually. So I'm not sure exactly if I'm gonna mount this yet or not, but to turn it on, oops. And the screen goes on here, shows your battery voltage saying 13.1, battery is showing 13.1. Uh, output is zero watts currently and AC 119 volts. Let's just plug in something small, like these Christmas lights here. Shouldn't be much of a draw. Those are on. Let's see what shows for output. So it's showing about 10 watts of output. And if I go over to my uh, battery meter here is showing about 2.9 just under 3 amps of draw uh, running these lights right here let's see if we pull these out see our draw with just the inverter on is only at one and a half amps of draw and then let's see with it off draw should be at just basically nothing so it's not really drawing much with the inverter itself turned on. One thing I've really been wanting to test out with this uh, setup is to see if I could uh, extend the range of the car. Right now I've got uh, 81 amp hours at 72 volts of battery capacity for the motor controller. And so I was hoping maybe I could use this to use the 12 volt battery to actually charge the car. So this is the plug for the charger that charges the 72 volt pack. We just plug it in here. Let's see if it'll kick on. There it goes. So looks like we're pulling around 880 watts. Right here it's showing about 80 amps of draw charging just under 10 amps currently and the draw should be a lot higher because that's only 12 volts whereas the uh, you know it's charging 10 at 72 volts um, but really with that that'll give me three hours of charge time just on this battery alone because all the other electronics don't really use much of the battery at all maybe two to three percent in an entire day um, so that will allow me to extend, extend the, the range quite a bit.
All right, so that's gonna pretty much wrap up this install. Um, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. The fitment uh, is honestly better than I could have planned for. Um, everything seems to function really well. The only thing I did notice is if I put it under a pretty heavy load and I'm pulling around 1500, 1600 watts, um, the voltage on the inverter does start to drop. But when I look at the battery itself, it's still running around 13 volts. So I think I have some sort of a bottleneck in the voltage uh, or in the power supply. And I think it comes down to the the 12 volt battery itself has four gauge wires coming from it to the bus bar, which then goes to everything else. And those four gauge wires, I believe can only handle around a hundred amps um, through continuously. So I think that's really where my hangup is. I think if I in increase the size or the gauge of those cables, I really shouldn't have any issue. But for everything I tried, um, I had no issues. Like I said earlier in the video, kind of the big reason I wanted to do this was to be able to charge the cart while I'm driving to extend the range a little bit if I needed to. Um, and then to plug in some other little things here and there. So I won't be using anywhere near 3000 watts. This is definitely overkill, but it's kind of nice to have the extra if you ever did need it. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing a little bit of a different modification than most of my others. Um, if you did like that, make sure you're subscribed and I hope to see you guys again soon.